All right, Parkinson's. This was taken last week. This is Carl. Um, Carl, this is a fun story. He lives in Southern California. He owns his own skydiving company, one of the biggest skydiving companies in the southwest of the U.S. In February of about a year ago, uh, last year, I get this email. Hey, I'm Carl. I'm leaving LAX. I got Parkinson's. I saw your movie. I'm head to MSL. I was like, wow, cool. Hey, Carl, nice to meet you via email. Please stay in touch. You know? So two or three months later, I, I stay in touch with him. He's like, I don't feel nothing. I don't feel nothing. Two or three months in, nothing. And by the way, he was like, I'm hunched over. I got bad gait, like many people with Parkinson's, the trembling, the normal, the normal symptoms. About three, three and a half months in, suddenly, he gets up in the morning, he's standing up straight. Trembling stops. But it would, he would have these, he still does, he'd have these like six to eight to nine hours a day where all symptoms just disappear. Then he falls right off again. And he's like, Eric, it's more frustrating because at least when I wake up in the morning, I know I'm going to be hunched over, I know I'm going to be shaking, but now I, don't, I can't even make plans. I don't know. Am I going to be okay today? But obviously, he's not unhappy. But... I finally, after much badgering, convinced him to let me cover this guy. So just last week, I went down to see him. And that's me on the left, obviously. Um, my wife is, uh, took the picture. Um, and he's going to let me follow him. I'm going to be at MSL, by the way, at the end of February. And I'll tell you why. I'm working on a sequel to the movie, and I'll get into that. But Carl's going to be there with me. Um, well, I'm going to be there at the same time. So I've got Carl's story here. I interviewed him at a long, great length. I'm going to follow him in, in Kiev, Ukraine. And then since we're both living in Southern California, I'll, I'll keep up with him. But it's interesting because I wanted to include him because he's, it's just, he's like in the middle of it, you know? Parkinson's been living with it for a little while. He's like maybe in his early 50s. I think he's had it for five, six-ish years. But um, so yeah, it's a great story because he's, he's still kind of like figuring it out, you know? He's, having, he's not perfect, but we're hoping, obviously, that after the second round, maybe the you know, five to six hours a day will be longer. Maybe it'll go away completely for a while. But also what's interesting, guys, you got to remember, will it stay away? Let's say it comes back and it all goes away. It could come back in a year or two. It is a pretty intense degenerative disease. Fetal stem cells aren't a magic bullet. But people, again, like Carl, will probably find himself going every year to make sure his Parkinson's stays away. Just, I mean, what a wonderful option to have. You know, at least you have the ability to go do this if we really have the means to do it. There's M-cell stats on Parkinson's. They've treated nearly 200 of them. 85% of the cases they've seen this. I will say, I've met some people with late-stage Parkinson's that have not had improvements. It's very sad. It's very unfortunate. This is not happening to everybody. I'm not going to pretend that at all. But again, just showing you what I've seen. All right, this is Lee. Lee was a fan of my work back since when I made the Brzezinski documentary. She helped financially with some of the patients. She was always like an activist for Brzezinski. So we'd always kind of stayed in touch. And I did the God Cells, and she saw it. She went, oh my God, I'm going to Keith. And she's like, I've got, she's, you know, she's like, I got all these issues. I never knew any of these things. So uh, there I am in Kiev. That's my picture of her in downtown Kiev outside of the hotel. She has Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, arthritis, interstitial cystitis. If you don't know what that is, that's when your bladder blows up like a balloon and there's no urine in it. But you feel like you have to pee all the time. You have to urinate all the time. She had that. And of course, irritable bowel, just a host of autoimmune problems. Aside from her feeling fantastic, one of the measurable things for Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism is your thyroglobulin antibodies. Anything less than one unit per milliliter is considered normal. She was off the charts in February 2017 at 392, off the charts. She had two therapies. The first one knocked it way back. A year later, she did it again. After the second therapy, down to four. So again, aside from her feeling great, never been felt better, but again, it's a measurable change in her blood chemistry that these cells affected. There she is at M-cell uh, with one of the nurses. But yeah, I mean, can you imagine with all these issues and having them all, she spent like $30,000 on, on supplements and all this stuff out of pocket to deal with this before she saw a documentary and heard about this therapy. So she's obviously extremely excited. Um, her irritable bowel went away. She's wearing high heels again for the first time. She's a very busy professional. She owns her own company. And uh, she's, you know, so what's interesting too is after the first round of cells, what happens to a lot of people, they go back to their old bad lifestyle because they feel so good. And so she just totally started eating fast food and like totally let everything go away. But she still was holding up pretty good. But um, anyway, but even through that, she's doing fantastic. This is my father. 
My father, in his 70s, type 2 diabetes. Like many Americans who love their high fructose corn syrup sodas, love their white bread and their white pasta, and him being a red-blooded Italian, just a poster child for type 2 diabetes. <laughs> I love him, but he just is. There he is, hilariously, wearing his Chernobyl shirt he bought in Ukraine when he was getting the therapy. I thought this was appropriate. But with him, um, one of the biggest things we were afraid of with my father in type 2 was feet. He had no feeling in his toes. We'd hold a hot hair dryer to his toes. He couldn't feel it. Full heat. No, couldn't feel it. He went in March of 2017, and within a month, all of the feeling came back. And he's been fine ever since. He hasn't gone back. So, and he still doesn't live a perfect life. He stopped drinking the Pepsis and the sodas, still loves his white bread and his pasta. He's a single guy. You know, you know, so what I'm trying to get at is they still did their job, um, even though he hasn't really taken perfect care of himself. So, um, but he's still, he's a great guy. He's really healthy and got a good energy. And I'm just trying to say is that I'm, I'm personally blown away that the numbness in the feet hasn't returned yet. And it's been over two years, only one round of therapy. So... There's a lot of, again, I only want to talk about people that I've met, but with diabetes in general, all the things that go with it, these cells do remarkable things for. And again, what I said earlier about growing new capillaries and new blood vessels, that's one of the biggest reasons why he has feeling in his feet again, is because he has a bunch of new blood vessels down there that also are fighting against whatever goes on with numbness and eventual you know, loss of your feet if you let it go too long. Type 1 diabetes, that has a good results with as well. But it's another challenging one. There are a handful of people that have gone off insulin, but it's not everybody. And it also is, you'll have to, the, the patient has to be on top of this. If the patient does, isn't willing to make the lifestyle changes, M cells therapy can only do so much. And I'm gonna get in a little later about what they might be doing further with type one. But in general, type one and type two diabetes, this is a remarkable therapy for you. Not a magic bullet cure, but pretty darn remarkable what it can do in the rejuvenation and repair of the damage diabetes can do to you. All right, this is Danny with a blue shirt with her mother hugging her. I'm going to get into arthritis a little bit. Ankylosing spondylitis is in the arthritis family. Only 200,000 people a year in the U.S. get this. This is very rare. This is when your cartilage and your vertebrae fuse together over time. And over time, you eventually are hunched over with a curved broomstick for a spine. Incredibly painful as this unfolds. She was addicted to narcotics, fentanyl patches, high school kid, into college, just trying her best just to survive through this. Fetal stem cells, boom. A college rowing team. Like this, I'm not saying this to everybody. I've only met one patient with that's had ankylosing spondylitis, but <laughs> she's had it twice, and she hasn't had it in a couple of years. She's doing great. She just got married. She's doing great. This is okay. What's interesting too is what happens a lot with uh, this therapy I've seen. Danny desperately needed it. Family's not wealthy. They scrabbed, scrounged the money together to get this child this therapy, not even knowing if it would work. And so what happens is the child does great, and then the mom goes, I want this now. Grandma goes, I want this. Everybody they meet wants this now, just for whatever. So here's her mother at MCEL getting it for anti aging reasons because she wanted to. But more importantly, her mother, and Dan, or Danny's grandmother, has severe rheumatoid arthritis. Couldn't open jars, had trouble climbing stairs, et cetera, et cetera. This is the grandmother getting uh, the fetal stem cell therapy in Ukraine. She can now open jars. And what's interesting, too, is some people have these crazy fast responses, like in a couple of days, while other people take some time. We went out to dinner a couple of nights later after her therapy was finished, and she kind of like briskly walked up the stairs in the hotel, and oh my god, I just can't believe what I just did. And um, so she's one of the lucky ones. I will say, as far as how fast it happened, rheumatoid arthritis, it's highly inflammatory, it's degenerative. Stem cells isn't going to permanently take care of it. But if you have severe rheumatoid arthritis, what I've seen, you get it, maybe a year goes by, two years, it starts creeping back, you get it again, keep pushing it back. OK, this is not the most attractive picture in the world. I'm sorry, but this is a colonoscopy. Crohn's disease. This patient is from Canada. Um, obviously, the one on the top is July, the one on the bottom is September. Um, he had the treatment in May, and the most recent one I can get him to get um, was the one in July. You can see how inflamed it is. And then, of course, in September, um, huge improvements in the colonoscopy images. I won't leave that up too long, but it does really good things for anything digestive. Because, I guess, the way the intestines work, and now there's a lot of regeneration there, kind of like the skin being our largest organ, and because you're getting intestinal-related cells as well, harvested from the fetus, 
They just go to do their work on the, on the digestive system for the same reasons that it does good for autistic kids that have digestive problems, et cetera. This is sort of like the list of things that they have experienced treating. I'll kind of go through a few. I've met some people with late stage dementia, didn't do great, just to be honest. But they have good results in early stages of dementia and Alzheimer's. They have a good, decent amount of experience with it. But what's great about Alzheimer's, anything neurological, is because fetal stem cells is the only stem cell type where you're getting actual neurological brain-related cells put into you. And there's no problem with them crossing the blood-brain barrier. So it's just it's, it's like one of the more remarkable things you can do for someone with Alzheimer's versus the sort of litany of drugs that we have. Things I, I went over um, plastic anemia. And what's interesting too is like because our lungs are such big organs, people with lung problems, I've been followed some cystic fibrosis kids, even though it's not a cure, this is a genetic mutation, cystic fibrosis, but kids, their lungs were improved because of this and they were able to kind of deal with it being chronic until you know, things just eventually got worse. Cystic fibrosis is inevitably a deadly disease, but it does help with anything lung-related, general asthma, you know, things like that. Um, I mentioned earlier, like, like it says, they say chronic fatigue. I can speak for that myself. Chronic heart failure. Now, remember, you're getting the sort of beginning soups of the bone marrow in these cells. You're getting the beginnings of the blood system, but you're also getting fetal heart cells. So if someone suffered from a heart attack or just had heart surgery, then getting injected with those types of cells, they know what they are. It's kind of why I called it the God cells. These things know what they are. They're just doing God's work. They're just biology. They're injected into you and they go, oh boy, where do I need to go? Here's the heart. Okay, I'm going to repair the heart. Oh, here's the liver. I'm going to repair the liver. So um, it does great things for heart um, disease as well. Erectile dysfunction is fascinating. People go there, guys in their 90s go there just for this because not only does it uh, raise your libido, but they have a specific protocol going back to the personalized medicine side of this that focuses just on that. Obviously, hypertension does some decent stuff with kidney problems. They can't always treat anybody on dialysis, unfortunately, but certain kidney diseases they can. Obviously, liver disease. Lupus is technically sort of in the arthritis kind of family. Does great with that. I won't harp on this too long. I, I kind of like to focus on people that I've met 